Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone really has. There are radioactive secrets beneath the banks and waters of a North County creek that may be linked to a staggering number of cancers, illnesses, and birth defects. The inviting currents of Coldwater Creek, there's something very wrong, wind through miles of North County neighborhoods, parks, and schools. Why are all these people in North County sick? Carrying a legacy of nuclear waste. Karen Nickel, who has an autoimmune disease, can't believe how many of her classmates and childhood neighbors are getting sick. I don't want my kids or any other kids to end up like me. About two years ago, Janelle Wright and several of her class of 88 McClure North High School friends started wondering why so many of their peers were battling cancer. Where it got to be suspicious was um, when we had two friends that were diagnosed within a few months of each other with appendix cancer, and both people were told that that's a one in a million cancer. Wright, an accountant and former auditor, started collecting data from her classmates. Soon, peers from neighboring schools reached out too. On Facebook, this just took off like wildfire. Wright became equally alarmed when data showed some of her classmates' children had serious medical problems too. We're seeing odd things like several children have had to have their thyroids removed before they were 10 years old. Connected by Facebook, high school, and illness, they made a startling discovery. The creek where they played as children carried a secret. In the 1940s, Malincrod Chemical Works in downtown St. Louis purified thousands of tons of uranium to make the first atomic bombs. But the process also generated enormous amounts of radioactive waste. Citing national security, the government quietly ordered the material moved to North St. Louis County in 1947. 21 acres of airport land became a dumping site where a toxic mixture of uranium, thorium, and radium sat uncovered or in barrels. In the 60s, government documents noted contents from the rusting barrels were seeping into nearby Coldwater Creek. And by the 90s, the government confirmed unsafe levels of radioactive materials in the water. You're having to grasp this idea that there was something wrong that nobody knew about, our parents didn't know. Janelle and the 2,000 people now on her Coldwater Creek Facebook page wonder if, over the years, they breathed in radioactive dust that blew in from the dump. Now, the stuff at Coldwater Creek, most of it has been cleaned up, but some of the same nuclear waste that contaminated Coldwater Creek ended up at the Westlake landfill in Earth City. The landfill sits on a floodplain just eight miles from a water intake, intake station. Five on your side has been looking into these cancer cases for a year now. Florissant natives who grew up near Coldwater Creek released alarming data today. This comes after Five on Your Side investigator Lisa Zygman first exposed the possible link to nuclear waste and rare cancers in North St. Louis County. As Lisa reports, what federal and state investigators would not do, this group has the results and they are jaw dropping. First, the background. In the 1940s, radioactive waste was shipped to land near Lambert Airport. Tons of uranium, thorium, and radium seeped out of barrels from those sites into a nearby creek, and radioactive particles blew into residential neighborhoods for years. The Facebook group, Just the Facts, Please, have been collecting data for three years. They confirmed 1,400 cases of cancer linked to radiation exposure. We're talking about low-level repeated radiation. They found 113 brain cancers and tumors. This very rare tumor that usually only shows up in 60-year-old men is showing up in children and babies and 30-year-old females. The most alarming is the number of cases of appendix cancer. Typically in the United States, there are 1,000 cases reported a year. In North County, there are nearly 40. Sherry Riley is one of those cases. She grew up near Coldwater Creek in Florissant from the late 60s through the 80s. It's almost like they built this lovely city on bad ground and poisoned all the people. Medical professionals like Dr. Rama Suresh are taking notice. So it needs to be closely looked at. Dr. Suresh is so concerned, she's now asking her appendix cancer patients if by chance they grew up in North County. And she's referring them to the Coldwater Creek Facebook page. The Army Corps of Engineers tests the creek for radiation levels. The Facebook organizers want homes and soil tested too. 
You know, I can't find any similar undertaking like this in the country, where a group of citizens linked through their high school, McClure North, and their neighborhoods connect years after graduation because so many of their friends are dying or being diagnosed with rare forms of cancer. This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. But after receiving thousands of records and declassified reports from the Army, it's confirmed that during the Cold War, the United States military conducted secret tests on unsuspecting people in the city of St. Louis. A local sociologist will make her findings public tomorrow, but she spoke first to the I-team's Lisa Zygman. Lisa Martino Taylor's life work has been to uncover details of the Army's ultra secret military experiments carried out in St. Louis and other cities during the 1950s and 60s. This study was secretive for a reason. Um, they didn't have um, volunteers stepping up and saying, Yeah, I'll breathe zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles. These Army archive pictures show how the tests were done in Corpus Christi, Texas in the 1960s. In Texas, planes were used to drop the chemical, but in St. Louis, the Army placed chemical sprayers on buildings and station wagons. City officials were kept in the dark about the tests. The Cold War cover story was that the Army was testing smoke screens to protect cities from a Russian attack. The truth, according to Martino Taylor, was much more sinister. It's pretty shocking. Um, the level of duplicity and secrecy. Um, um, clearly, they went to great lengths to deceive people. By making hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, she uncovered once classified documents that confirmed the spraying of zinc cadmium sulfide. The greatest concentration of this compound was sprayed near the Pruitt Igo housing complex just south of downtown St. Louis. It was home to 10,000 low income people, and an estimated 70% were under the age of 12. Martino Taylor claims they all unknowingly inhaled this compound morning, noon, and night so the government could measure its effects on their lungs. So, this is in violation of all medical ethics, all international codes, and the military's own policy at that time. In 1994, then Congressman Richard Gephardt asked the Army to open its records and explain the St. Louis testing. We want to make very sure that nothing went on that would harm anyone and that all the facts are out on the table. Documents released in the 90s show the Army placed sprayers on this former Knights of Columbus building on Lindell and in Forest Park. There's a lot of evidence that indicates that people in St. Louis, in the city, particularly in minority communities, were um, subjected to military tests that was connected to a larger radiological weapons development and testing project. For the first time, she links the St. Louis testing to a company called U.S. Radium, a company notorious for lawsuits involving radioactive contamination of its workers. United States Radium um, had this reputation where they had been legally liable, found legally liable uh, decades prior, for um, producing a radioactive powdered paint that killed many young women who painted fluorescent watch dials. While the Army admits it added a fluorescent substance to the zinc cadmium compound, details of whether it was radioactive remain secret. Documents uncovered to date indicate the Army never conducted follow-up studies to see whether the compound caused long-term health issues. In 1972, after years of crime, poverty, and decline, the government destroyed the pruitt Igo housing complex. Lisa Zygman, News Channel 5, I-Team. Martino Taylor has placed all of her research, including the declassified documents, online and will link you to that data